APC wins big in last Saturday's by-election, but not without some legal hurdles to cross in Imo and Lagos states. And Serap asked President Buhari to halt the borrowing of 17 trillion naira from the pension funds by governors to fund infrastructural facilities in their states. This is Plus Politics. I am Kayode Ladeinde. Welcome, this is Plus Politics. Last Saturday's by-election may have come and gone, but not without some uncertainty arising from conflicting judgments in Imo State and also in Lagos. In Imo State, all progressives Congress clinched the seat, but the challenge is that two candidates are laying claim to the victory. Ibezim and Ararume are saying that they are the rightful owner of that particular election. Also in Lagos, despite clear victory at the poll for the APC's candidate, the PDP candidate says the APC candidate, since he possesses double registration, cannot be voted for. Joining us to throw more light on these, uh, what we call the legal uh, uh, fireworks among these candidates is Mr. Liberos Oshoma, who is definitely uh, a legal practitioner and also a public affairs analyst. Good evening, Mr. Shoma. Yeah, good evening, Kyle. Yeah, let's start from uh, Imo State. That looks more complex than that of Lagos State. Then we'll come back to Lagos later on. Um, uh, some have said that uh, why this, um, these two men have their issues to sort out in court, that INEC shouldn't have allowed two of them to go into the poll and leaving people confused. What do you make out of that uh, concern? Yeah, first and foremost, let's quickly to the whole this thing. Um, it is sad that after 21 years of democracy, our politicians are still behaving like kids who cannot play together. This do or die attitude of politicians. Um, if care is not taken, will destroy this democracy. A collaboration with the judiciary. A situation where judges begin to give a conflicting order. It's um, sad and shameful. And also, INEC should learn to put its foot down. Because it is, um, even though it is statutory that parties are uh, the co custodian of ele electoral victory, but it also uh, the notorious fact that you cannot contest an election without a candidate. So, in 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 the event that the party does not have a candidate, how then can you declare such? A, a party as a winner of an election and then let them go and fish for a candidate when they are done they now bring a candidate to fill in in the in, in the, the void so the forms who, who as we speak now which candidate can i make truly claim his apc candidate in that election so that for me is um, the the void here that okay. I think I next should have insisted. And another I put it put down. And, and another clarity I want you to also put is that uh, before now you remember the case of Amechi. People will also want to remind us that it is the party that is being voted for. It is the party that is on the ballot and not a particular candidate. And that seems to be where INEC uh, rested his judgment by declaring the party as winner without mentioning the name of a candidate. As much as that was unprecedented, uh, don't you think um, 
ANEC does not really own the entire blame. Yeah, do we still have liberals on the line? I guess the, there's a bit of a network challenge. I was just going to ask him to help us throw more light on the INEC's position, because as far as INEC is concerned, we've been told over time that uh, it is about the parties that are on the ballots and not individuals. And definitely, if people voted for party, should INEC you know, be blamed for this issue that we have just encountered, or what exactly as the fault of INEC, uh, we will try to establish contact with Liberos, but the interim, uh, let's quickly take a short break and try to re-establish connection with our guest, Liberos Oshuma. Please don't go anywhere. Yeah, welcome back. It's still Plus Politics, and we still have uh, Libero Zoshoma, a legal practitioner who is trying to help us uh, demystify some of the confusions that we found ourselves, starting with Imo. We'll come back to Lagos later on. So, Mr. Libero Zoshoma, before we went on that break, I was just seeking clarity on what INEC might call their stand, looking at what happened to Amici's case. Remember when they told us from the Supreme Court that it is the party that is being voted for and not a particular candidate. What's different this time around in what INEC has done? Okay, uh, we understand that we are still here to reconnect with him. I, I, I just want him to probably throw more light on this, since we had this kind of issues, because a lot of people are saying that INEC probably hasn't done anything wrong by declaring the party that had the highest number of votes during the by-election, but is it a case of this is a, a, a different case, it should be treated like the issue of Zamfara State? where the party could not say this is the original candidate of the party and therefore APC lost out in all the seats that has to do with that election. So we're trying to confirm what exactly is different in this time around. There is also another aspect to this conversation and that has to do with um, what about the idea of allowing two candidates campaign for election and two of them were saying, vote for me, vote for me, vote for my party. Is it a case of two people having, you know, double numbers from two candidates, therefore putting the, the closest rival at disadvantage? Is it a case of dividing this number into two and judge each of these two candidates who are laying claim to victory, that's Ibezim, and that of Ararume, and declare the second person whom, by the time you look at his figures, is higher than any of these two. These are some of these little uh, bottlenecks that we want our guests to throw more light on. It's, it has been quite uh, confusing for a lot of political pundits, and they want to see clarity on that. And that's why uh, anytime soon, when we connect with uh, Liberal Soshoma, it will... Okay, I understand we have Liberal Soshoma. Quickly... Okay, let's take a listen to some of the comments made by the lawyers when they visited the court. Then we'll be back in a short while. Frank Ibezim did not lawfully participate in the 4th September primary. And as such, whatever vote credited to him is a waste vote that cannot be continued in determining the winner of the primary election and the man that had majority of the vote cast after discontinuing Ibezim, Uchemba, Omiagara, Koze vote is Senator Ifanyara Rume and the court ordered that Ifanyara Rume's name be sent to INEC and that INEC should must accept that. Today is not a surprise judgment because this is what all Imolites and Okigo Zone people I expected to happen, and we are happy today that is exactly the judgment is what we saw today. Is what actually what happened in the judgment. We are satisfied because the senator Rumen won the election without any dispute. He won it. 
So we are surprised when they say that somebody won an election that is not won. So we are not happy. But today, all of us, we are happy. Now, that was a counsel to Senator Ararume and that uh, uh, last respondent. That was when that judgment came that the authentic candidate is Ararume. But there is another judgment where Ibezim was also declared the authentic candidate. So it's been quite confusing. And the INEC went ahead to conduct the election. Was INEC wrong in going ahead to put APC in the ballot, or INEC has done his own job by allowing the election to take place, and now we have APC as the winner. So who is going to be the senator? We see celebrations in two camps. The two of them are laying claim to that seat, and that leaves us more confused. Unfortunately for us, we have Liberals Oshoma back uh, to tell us more on this. Quickly, Liberals, quite a lot of questions have been thrown up and we'll leave you to dissect them one after the other. The first one is, do we really blame INEC looking at what happened to the Supreme Court issue when they said it is the party that has been voted for and not candidate? Or is it a case of what happened in Zamfara State where APC lost out in all the elections? How should this particular issue be looked at? If you look at the provisions of um Section 30, 31, 32, to all the way to 40. It deals extensively of the Electoral Act. Okay. It deals extensively with the issues of nomination of candidates. And uh, the Supreme Court, in the case of Zampara, you, you said, uh, nullified the election of the APC on the ground that there were no primaries validly conducted. Here also, you have a situation where candidates are fighting over primaries. So the only implication for all of this is the fact that either there was no primary, or if there was, it was not properly conducted. And that's why, in one breath, one court would say it is Sarah Roman. Court of Appeal said it is, um, what's this other man's name? Ibezim. Now? Ibezim. Hmm. And then another federal high court came and said, Ararome. So I, I do not think that the intendment, it is the intendment of a section, uh, what do you call it, 34 of um, the Electoral Act, for INEC to be waiting for a party to clear its nomination before election. If you look at section 31 also, it says every political party shall not later than 15 days before the date appointed for a general election that the provisions of the submit to the commission in the prescribed from the list of the candidates supposed to, supposed to stop, sponsor at that party. So when you have all of this, and then, INEC is saying, okay, yes, the party has won the election. Who is the candidate of the, the party? So we should wait until the candidate uh, is settled by the court, and then you now fill the candidate in. Wouldn't that be defeating the essence of having to know a candidate before the election? Then also, another germane question that I will need to ask now is, in the event that somebody now needs to go to court to challenge the election, which should be challenged within 21 days upon declaration, who is the candidate that you are going to, that you are going to drag before the court? Hmm. Because there's some candidates. So I do not think INEC should have sat down and be waiting for the party. What they should have done is to declare the party with the second highest vote as the winner of that election, so that politicians will learn to put their house in order and not resort to all this gimmick to, to, to uh, twist the hand of INEC. Okay. Liberals, you know. Then on the issue of Lagos. Okay. 
I was going to, let me, let me ask the question so that because of time, you can also help us hit it directly. Uh, because that section you mentioned, that's uh, uh, section 31, that every political party shall not later than 60 days before the date appointed for a general election. And uh, let me not bore people with uh, what you've mentioned. So la let's look at the case of Lagos. And uh, the, the opposition party stressed it. If you also look at section 33, I have the section that 33 here too. Yes. Let me read it the for you. The political party sh shall yes. not be allowed to change or substitute yes. his candidate whose name has been submitted to section 32 of this act, except in the case of death or withdrawal by the candidate. So that also justifies so, some of the points you raised. Yes. So quickly, uh, so that I can marry it with the first issue you've raised, uh, that of Lagos, PDP says that this is a man who had actually, you know, voted in Etiosa and suddenly moves to Ikorodu that you shouldn't even be uh, uh, participating in the election. And that's the case of, <laughs> according to them, double registration. <laughs> and you might also put it into context, some of the argument against uh, the likes of Honorable uh, Faleke, whom they believed that also was operating with double registration from Kogi and that of Lagos, if you can put it into perspective. Uh, 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 Kayode, it is a notorious fact that you can transfer your registration. It is also not stated in section 66 of the 1999 constitution as amended that not voting for yourself in an election, it's a ground for disqualification in the election. Okay. It is not there in section 66 or section 65. If you remember the case of Pope Diano, he was registered in Lagos, and when he wanted to contest for governorship uh, of Anambra State, he transferred his registration to Anambra. The case of Faleke also was instructive. You have a lot of people who reside in one place, but are from a different place. Until they want to contest for election, they will transfer their registration. You have students who registered in the university, and upon graduation, they will transfer their registration to their current place of abode. I think PDP should look for a more tenable reason to disqualify the APC, if there's any at all. Instead okay. of looking Give at us. this... Uh, Liberals, Liberals, quickly before you go, uh, because uh, a network has not been friendly to us. I'm sure you have a lot of things to tell us. Before you go, can you also distinguish the issue of uh, a candidate from that of an ordinary voter? We're looking at someone who, as at the time he voted in Etiosa, might say, I am from this area. Now is going to be a representative of another senatorial district. Is there any confusion there? Yeah, it's just a moral body. A moral body in the sense that if uh, somebody does not participate or does not subscribe to the ideas of an area, he doesn't live there, he doesn't do anything there, then um, how then you will say, such a candidate can represent the area. But we also know the fact that such candidates in some cases, for if, despite the fact that he doesn't live there, but participate in every activity of that area. I am from Annegbete. I don't live in Annegbete, but I participate in every political activities, in every communal activities, in every church activities in the village. So for the fact that I'm not registered there, does not mean I cannot be voted for there. Wow. I cannot transfer my voting. Secondly, quickly, the last point is the fact that when the issue of voting really, it is not compulsory. It is not stated anywhere in our electoral act or in our constitution that when you are a candidate in an election, that you must vote. Provided you have the required numbers, even if you don't vote for it, how about a situation where you are unable to vote because the the, the, 
machine, the card reader at your pulling unit, try to capture your fingerprint. Okay. Thank you. So what uh, happened in that case? Let me give you one for the road, uh, maybe in 45 seconds, if you can come back to the emo issue. Another issue I want you to quickly uh, trash is the fact that some said INEC on the ground could even say APC lost the election because two candidates were campaigning, two set of people were voting for one party, leaving the closest rival, you know, a bit disadvantageous in terms of the number he could gather against two people conversing for one vote. I mean, for one uh, candidate. Is that tenable? No, it, the, the question is, it was the party that is on the logo. I next should have settled the question of the candidature of the party either way before the election. Okay. Forget the fact that you have matters in court. So that's why there are there are higher courts. What it means, if you cannot settle the candidate of the election, it means that there is no candidate. A situation where you are you have a court of appeal decision and a federal high court decision, and you refuse to recognize that of the court of appeal, rather you say it conflicts with the federal high court decision, it means that there is no candidate. Okay. Thank you so much, Liberal Sushuma, for your time. No short, but quite insightful. That's thank you good. for your time. Yeah. And to our viewers, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, Sarah makes known a stand as regards the 17 uh, uh, trillion naira to be borrowed by the governors from the pension fund. We'll be back after the short break.